very warm welcome to another vlog it's been a while and uh, this time around i am traveling north to the antrim coast uh, so it'll be all seascapes or mostly seascapes i've stopped on the way up because uh, i saw a photograph online of a tree a lone tree in a field it's called the fairy tree at Knockbridge, not far far from loud village um, so it took me a while to find it. I stopped off in the local village here and had to ask two or three people where is the famed fairy tree of Knockbridge and um, nobody could really tell me where it was um, until a gentleman popped into a shop and the lady who I asked previously came out, opened the door of the van and says it's up that way. So I found the tree anyway and I've walked a little bit up the hill. It's a beautiful tree, quite impressive and unique. So it's a grey, um, cold, damp day and I think that's going to be the weather over the next couple of days. So I'm going to have to live with it and maybe use the light on the sea when I get to the Antrim coast rather than the sky. Uh, the, the light reflecting off the waves and the rocks uh, to create a little bit of contrast and drama in any photographs I'm going to take. And you never know, uh, weather forecast uh, is, is, isn't always uh, correct. So I'll cross my fingers and hope for a little bit of good light, but um, I'm stuck with this at the moment, so I had to take the infrared camera out and do my best with this magical looking tree. It'd be great to see it on a sunrise or a sunset shoot. So let's move on to the next location, which should be the dark hedges, more trees on this seascape journey. Well, the second location uh, today is the Dark Hedges and it's uh, synonymous really with Ireland and the Game of Thrones and I didn't know what I was really expecting from this location um, but it's a lovely spot. Uh, there's a little hotel um, and a parking area and there's no road, uh, road traffic so it's quite peaceful with people just walking um, easily up and down the road and uh, taking in the enormous uh, beech trees and um, it's, it's, it's more the, the, the girt and the stretch of the trees across the road rather than the height of them. Um, but viewed through, um, I was shooting at about 120 mil and I've switched now to my uh, 135 mil lens uh, which even gives a greater uh, compression if you'd like um, of the trees. Uh, again, grey, flat as a pancake, uh, light, so I've switched to infrared again and uh, there's a lovely uh, little bit of contrast created, particularly with the, uh, the, the grass uh, along the edges of the road will appear uh, quite bright um, and that creates contrast with the road itself and accentuates that leading line. So I'm here about uh, an hour and I'm just enjoying the scene and uh, having a chat with people and um, and I met a, a, a the first person who's ever come up to me and says I've seen you on YouTube so a big hi to Claire and her friends who are up here on the uh, Antrim coast and have been for the last few days and I hope they got some wonderful uh, images as I hope I'll get some wonderful images in the next couple of days. Um, so I'll leave you with uh, one or two of the shots here. Well, I've had a, a couple of fails with regards to locations that I selected for this afternoon. Um, the first location, Dunluce Castle, and I wanted to get down onto the rocky beach and see the castle above me. But it wasn't to be. It closes at half three in the afternoon, and the gate leading down to that cove, and there's a little cave there, was closed. So I moved on to the causeway, uh, the Giant's Causeway. But I realized there was just too little time to get down there, so a little bit of better planning might have served me better on this uh, trip. So I've moved on uh, to Dunseverick uh, Falls here. And this is a lovely little rapid, uh, surrounded by grass, but it drops into a gully. And that gully, and I'll 
played a little bit of video that I shot down on that uh, rock. They're quite slippy, the rocks here. And I have to say, this has got to be one of the most dangerous locations I've shot at. Um, I appeared well above the tide line and I knew there was a swell coming up and down into that gully. But I didn't realize that the size of the waves coming in uh, were very irregular. And one wave came up, I grabbed my camera, grabbed my bag and jumped to a higher rock. So tomorrow morning, I really don't know where I'll be. I think I'll try to stay the night at Ballantoy uh, Harbour and we might potter around there uh, tomorrow morning. Seascape here at uh, Ballantoy Harbour is it's an exhilarating place to photograph um, but it's challenging. Um, I came across first time here and I really didn't know where to point the camera um, there's lovely uh, areas to focus to try to um, conjure a composition um, in the rocks below and um, to time the large waves coming in. And there's another challenge in picking the right shutter speed. Um, so I was mixing it a little bit with two or three seconds to give um, a total separation between the water and the rocks. And then I got it down to about a third and then a sixth of a second um, to give that boiling fury to the sea as it was coming in. And that really worked, particularly I think a third, sixth of a second is good when you have a sea like this that's choppy, that's crashing in, that's moving quickly. Um, I was hoping that the, uh, the sea would cover this little uh, promontory here um, with the boy on it, uh, but it didn't happen. It happened once when I changed composition, typically, and uh, I ran back and it hasn't happened since. It was a high tide at half seven, and the uh, sun uh, rise was at eight o'clock, um, but it's, it's still fantastic to shoot away here. I found that 24 millimeters was about uh, the right focal length to capture some of the movement below me here, the boy, the rock, Elephant Island, or sorry, not Elephant Island, this is Sheep Island offshore. Um, but anything uh, wider than 24 millimeters was just reducing those subjects to, um, they were too small in the actual frame. Now I've switched to my 24 to 120, it's starting to get a little bit wet here. I'm not sure if it's uh, waterproofness. Um, because I thought that just 24 maybe to 35 would be more suitable for this location and it's just the feel of it on the morning um, so I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna potter around maybe get a bit of breakfast and see where the road takes us to the uh, left-hand side as such, to the western edge of Ballantoy Harbour. And the rock that you can see directly ahead, that is Elephant Rock. Um, and it's quite an impressive sight. It's a lovely little bit of farmland here. They've got rabbits uh, to the right there, you might see one running around and lots of meadow pipits and blackbirds. Um, covering the grass. I don't know whether you can see down here is a starling and uh, more pipits just piping out of them. Light wagtails. It's just a lovely little walk. 
well, as you can see by the side of my face here the sun's come out which is quite pleasant it's uh, it's nice to get away for a few days and to have a little bit of sunshine um, and it's actually creating a lovely little bit of contrast between the the water and the play of the water on the rocks the grass as you can see here uh, is is illuminated by that sun and there's a nice bit of contrast in the sky there you'll see between the the white and the blue as well so this might make a nice uh, uh, black and white image or a color image um, because there's, there's, there, there, re there really is value in taking a nice image on a sunny day. Um, as photographers, we tend not to do that. Um, but I might uh, take a color image and a black and white image or convert the color image to black and white. And I'll let you see the two of them. And let's uh, uh, contrast and, and compare them. So I finally made it back to Dunluce Castle and um, it truly is a magnificent landscape um, from the cove beneath the actual castle itself and whilst the car park and the castle above are quite beautiful, um, there's terrace there, um, there's walkways where this really is the wild side of it. So coming down the steps to the cave and then the grassy bank down to this little cove where the sea is breaking quite roughly and I need to be a little bit careful here. Um, I'm keeping an eye out for uh, breakers on the way in um, but there's a lot of haze in the air. You'll see it there, quite a lot of haze. Uh, I'm going to try this scene um, in standard colour, standard black and white and I'm going to switch over to the infrared camera just to see the grass on the actual bank below the castle. What effect that would have because it should turn up quite bright, the castle quite dark and then a contrasty sky. So we'll see whether that's happened. Um, I'm gonna make my way now to the Giant's Causeway for sunset. And again, I'm just keeping my eye on these waves coming in. Um, but I think we'll leave it there and onto the Giant's Causeway for sunset. And it's looking quite good out there. So fingers crossed. Well, making my way back up uh, the cliff um, and just before I got to the climb I uh, looked to the right and there was a little pond here perfectly still and uh, I wandered down hoping that the castle might be reflected in it and it was um, it's not a perfect image by any means the sky is very bright so I bracketed it roughly um, very roughly It's nearly dark now at the Giant's Causeway and um, I can't ever recall struggling as much um, to capture an image in, in, in any place as much as I have here over the past hour and a half and, um, and I just couldn't get it together um, between focal lengths and shutter speeds, the sea is very white, it's very difficult to get any texture in that sea and then even selecting simple scenes like the uh, the basalt columns on their own um, there were you know uh, lots of uh, of, of the um, foam that accumulates and is a little bit creamy looking um, so I'm not even sure whether I can put an image up um, uh, to accompany this vlog one image that I did take was not of the sea. It was as the sun was setting, and what a sunset! Wonderful sunset. 
thought it was just it was too bright and then it became too dark. It's a landscape here of real contrast of white sea, black basalt and, and a really bright sun and the clouds did colour up a little bit but it was just too contrasting and I just struggled with that. I'm not sure where tomorrow is going to take me but I'm going to go back up this road with my tail between my legs uh, a little bit disappointed with this evening shoot but sure that's the way it goes Well, it's another morning of crashing waves and white foam and that surf rushing onto a storm beach here. Um, so it's never easy. Um, first priority is keeping filters and the lens uh, itself free of sea spray. That's a challenge in itself and it's a distraction from um, looking for a composition. And I really struggled with that this morning again. Uh, so I struggled last night at the uh, Giants Causeway. But this is a much simpler scene um, this morning at uh, Kinbane Castle. Um, there's a lovely sweep of surf on the storm beach, which leads the eye uh, towards the castle and the rising sun in the background. And there was a little bit of colour in that sky this morning. But I wasn't happy with the actual foreground I got on these pebbles. It was a nice round uh, rock that I was trying to kind of anchor the scene against. But they kind of faded into the rocks around it uh, in, in that they're all quite dark and um, so then I selected a few uh, stones that were out in the surf and, um, and, and shot an image uh, with the surf out as such with just a little bit of water uh, accentuating those stones because every time the surf came in it covered everything um, so it's a challenging place to photograph but it's quite simple compositionally once you get your foreground, which I don't think I did. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's two options here. The first is at the end of this beach, turning left as you come down that fleet of steps from the car park above. And then the second option is on this little peak to the right here. Uh, and that uh, looks at the castle and the bay from the other end. And I uh, had a little clamber up that uh, little knoll as such and uh, I think I preferred that composition to the one I'm at now. The only reason I came down here was because the sun was rising in that direction and that really isn't a good enough reason uh, to use the light of the sun and I'm hoping that the sun will come up over those clouds on the horizon, illuminate the castle. We might have a little bit of contrast with a dark bay here and I'm going to make my way up to the peak there. Um, so there it is for this morning. Well, I went after those uh, small rocks again and I got absolutely soaked, um, you know, above the knees, uh, but not too bad, I didn't fall. But um, nonetheless, I've taken my soggy feet and squelched my way up to the top of this uh, little peak here, which is quite uh, precarious now that I look around. Um, and there's a beautiful scene um, and I actually much preferred this uh, composition. Um, it's really two arcs and there's rarely a time when a 14 millimeter lens is, is useful. Um, and I have the 14 to 24 out here and it's certainly useful for this scene for without it, um, the scene wouldn't be possible. I don't think a 16 mil would do this justice as such. Um, so I'll put this image uh, up uh, on the screen now and we'll move on to the next location. It's shot about five or six seconds just to provide a little bit of separation between the dark rocks on the left hand side bay and, and the water itself and it does that quite nicely.
Well, I can't believe it. It's not 11 o'clock in the morning and I've been soaked again here at a little novelty shot. Um, I think it's called um, Pan something um, rock. Uh, so it's a beautiful little structure. It's a kind of a wooden walkway from the beach here in Ballycastle uh, out to a rock. And I'm not sure why, maybe it's for fishing. Uh, but uh, regardless, it uh, makes a, a lovely man-made form in the landscape. Uh, this time I remembered to put my wellies on, uh, unlike this morning, um, but the water came up above the level of the wellies. So I'm hoping I have another pair of socks. As you can see, the wind is really up and I was shooting at about 15 seconds, doubling up a three stop and a six stop filter. Um, I've looked at the image in the back of the camera and it looks sharp enough and it gives a nice little uh, milkiness to the water which just facilitates the separation of the structure from the water. Uh, quite dull light but that's okay and I may process this in, in colour. Um, but it's a lovely little structure, well worth a visit if you're passing by Ballycastle. So the final stop on my trip up here to Antrim is to Murloc Bay and uh, I don't think this wind is going to serve me well there because I was hoping to go back and mix my love of trees with my love of seascapes there um, but we'll see what happens when we get there so, uh, so um, we'll pick up then Well, our little adventure in uh, Antrim has come to an end and uh, it's a stunning location, Murloc Bay here and this well-known tree behind me. I've spent about half an hour or so pottering around the rocks um, behind the trees, uh, thinking about getting uh, uh, some rocks in the foreground. But in the end, I thought that that detracts from the star of the show, which is the tree overlooking Murloc Bay here. And I decided uh, just to take the tree and the grass and I took the infrared camera out because it provides a wonderful separation between the grass uh, turning very bright, the tree, the dark sea and the sky. And I've played actually with the height the tripod is at uh, with a mind um, cons with consideration to the parts of the trunk that are contrasted with the grass, the sea and the sky and trying to get that strong part of the tree that's leaning up against the rock here and um, uh, you know have a backdrop as the dark sea there within the infrared. I also found it difficult being so close to the tree even at 14 millimeters again here we are I was only mentioning a while back how uh, seldom you need 14 millimeters but with the composition that I've selected here, I couldn't even get the, f the, the full width of the bay in. So I've uh, taken two compositions, one just a, a little bit to the right, and I'll merge them through so it won't be a, you know, a three by two, it'll be a, a little bit longer than that. I actually continued that exercise with the creation of a pano to include some of the, the, uh, uh, the hillside here covered in trees. So I'll see whether I uh, add that to uh, the image and, and make it a real panel as such. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, with regards to Antrim as a seascape location, um, I would highly recommend it. I'm not sure it has a match in the whole of Ireland um, where so many, uh, we use the word epic, but they are epic locations. I'm thinking of Dunluce Castle, Kinbane Castle, uh, a Ballantoy for the purists, a really magical location. You could spend a whole weekend at Ballantoy. Um, the Giant's Causeway, as I said, I didn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy the road down to it. The, I don't enjoy interpretive centres and the people, um, you know, flying drones, etc. You know, and I fly drones myself. But I just didn't enjoy the whole experience of the uh, Giant's Causeway, and that's one place I'd give a miss. Ballantoy will be top of the list uh, to return to. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little adventure and uh, I hope you can join me next time uh, wherever that may be.